So I wanted to talk to you about the examiner levels on the mark scheme because I think that sometimes this can be really overwhelming and stressful for students. So what I have done is I have taken the mark scheme and the, the levels of the mark scheme. You'll see one to six, six being the highest end of the mark scheme where grade eight and nine are awarded. And I've taken the mark scheme and I've put it in a more easy to follow format. You can actually find this resource on my TES shop. I will put the link to this in the caption. It's free to download for you to have a look at and there are some other free resources on there as well. But I'm gonna deconstruct this for you in terms of what you need to do at each level. So level one is referred to as being simple. Now at this level, students are able to describe the text and focus on the narrative. References to the task are incoherent with no sense of the writer, perhaps only mention of the name. And this is for marks one to five. Now, obviously, I know most students are going to ho be hoping to get above this, but this is kind of what level one looks like. And key things to remember, it's a simple understanding of the text and characters slash key themes. Now on to level two. And as you see, as we kind of go up the levels, there's more information because more is required of you at the levels. Now, level two, which is six to 10, um, which probably equates to like grade two, three. Um, so an explanation of this is that students are able to show awareness of the task and give a supported response with a point of view, e.g. why they think what they think. So like point and evidence style with some awareness of the writer um, and awareness of things being done on purpose. The key things to remember here are understanding the task with evidence from the text, like reference, from the te reference to the text, and awareness that the text has a function. So you'll kind of see that even marks six to 10 require students to be doing quite a few things. So now on to level three, which is marks 11 to 15, which is moving towards grade four. Obviously, we don't know the grade boundaries, we're just kind of talking roughly. Now, this is referred to as explained and structured. So you're going to be explaining yourself. Your points are going to be clearly structured, um, but it's still going to be like just basically an explanation of the text without any real sort of analysis or development. Um, now, at this level, students are able to demonstrate a grasp of the text and the task and explain why they think what they think. So you're giving justifications. References are formulaic and underdeveloped um, so that like you're doing it in like a PE style, referring to the text and responding to the task, but generally relevant. There is a sense of the writer's purpose. So even at this level, even also in your our supported relevant level, um, there's this mention of thinking about um, a text having a purpose and having an awareness of the writers. And that's why it's so important. It's mentioned even from relatively low down the mark scheme. Um, and there is, um, as I said, there's a sense of the writer's purpose and reference to more than one method technique. So my point with making this video is just to show you that in order to push into level four, level five, level six, where we're moving towards grades five, six, seven, eight, and nine, there's quite a lot that's required of you. So you need to remember these things when your teachers have been telling you to talk about the writer, think about the impact on the reader and the fact that when it says that sort of the text has a purpose, um, it's about thinking about the text having that impact on the reader. You're going to be thinking about more than one method at level three. Um, generally focused on the task. Note the word generally. Um, so sometimes students may deviate from the question and consideration of the writer as well. Now, level four. Now, this is where we're kind of sort of that more, more into that solid grade five and moving towards grade six as well. So that's sort of little, this band is where we are. Um, here, as I said, we don't know the grade boundaries, but just kind of based on historic data, that's what I would sort of say where we are with this one. And this now says clear understanding. So you are very clear the whole way through in your response to the question and you're showing a level of understanding. So students are able to clearly and consistently answer the question and focus on AO2 and AO3. So that is your methods and the impact of those on the reader and why the writer has done things and then linking it to the context. They see the text as a, con a construct, so something that the writer has done on purpose and thinking about those writer's intentions um, and they link to the method that, and they link the method to the text purpose. So what methods being used and what the writer is trying to achieve. Context is understood and explained, but maybe not used to develop the response. But there's context that is obviously been understood and it's been 
kind of applied and explained. Remember that it's just that clear understanding that is being demonstrated at this level and more focus on themes and ideas than plot and character or kind of the text topic and, um, and any characters that appear. So in the case of poetry, um, it could be sort of the sort of storyline or the themes of the poem that are just sort of being focused on with no real consideration of why those um, ideas are there. And key things to remember, consistent answer to the question all the way through for this level, not kind of deviating away from the question. Keep focus on that command word. Relevant AO3, um, so that's relevant context that applies to the points and evidence that you um, are discussing in your paragraph. Consistent consideration of methods, so constantly referring to methods. Shift from focusing on characters and plot to themes and ideas. So not just thinking about characters and the plot um, and kind of give a general retelling of the text and what's happening, but now more thinking about um, themes and ideas. So for thoughtful and developed, students are going to be applying their own ideas and they're developing those with those words. Like also, furthermore, and because... So justifying what they're saying. Students are able to demonstrate a thoughtful, developed consideration. They can explain more than what it means by offering alternate interpretations of the text, showing independent thinking. Students can show a more tentative, thoughtful approach. So being tentative, speculating about why things may have been done. So alternate interpretations offered when it says tentative, it means using modal verbs like may, might and could. Not all the way through. Um, and you need to craft that point of view as well. But at points, um, obviously, we can't expect you to know exactly what writers who lived 300, 400 years ago were thinking. So speculating about what they may have intended. And that's absolutely brilliant to signal to the examiner that you are placing interpretation on the text. Um, and evidence of independent thinking so showing that you are thinking about the text in your own way and that is demonstrated through the words above um, because it shows that you are trying to give different points of view and consider um, different perspectives of language and potentially also in terms of looking at context, contextual factors as well. And then engagement with the text through in-depth analysis of methods and consideration um, of the text. So in-depth, talking about words and phrases and methods in detail um, and thinking about why they have been used. What is the function? Always be asking why, not just in your introduction, but the whole way through. Nothing is there by accident. Everything is there with an intention. The words have been selected to have an impact on the reader or the audience. You are the reader or audience. What impact is that having on you? And exploring that in your analysis. And then finally, so we've had just before, thoughtful and developed. And then to move from thoughtful and developed, you are going to be wanting to push into convincing critical analysis and exploration. This is the top of the mark scheme. And this is where that idea of kind of having a concept, a thread that runs through your essay comes in. And this is for 26 to 30 marks. So in band five, in level five, 21 to 25, that's kind of like grade seven, maybe pushing towards grade eight. But once we're in band six, that's sort of grade eight and then at the top of that would be grade nine so students are able to explore their own concepts or interpretation of the text in terms of task so why has a writer done something what is their message to wider society what are they trying to achieve through writing a text no writer just writes a text for kind of like the sake of it in terms of the text that you're studying all the texts that you are studying have a function have a message um, that they are wanting to share with their readers most stories, the majority of stories have some sort of moral lesson, um, whether they're a cautionary tale, whether they are wanting to sort of share a particular perspective or view about the world or instill a particular ethos or, or that's a sense of belief within um, its readership. They have a function, a purpose, and it's your job to be able to outline that and explore that through your response. The responses illustrate their concept and use the answers to provide um, the answer and the answer uses the task to prove their concept. So you've got your concept in your introduction and the points that you're making are basically um, an illustration of what you said at the beginning, the whole way through. Everything is coming back to that introduction, that overarching idea 
about the function of the text. You use your body paragraphs to prove that. An analytical answer uses the quotations to extend the answer rather than being formulaic. So the quotations are selected judiciously, they're well selected, and the quotations are there to prove the point that you outlined at the beginning. Um, and they're illustrating that concept. They're not just in there because you've thought, oh my goodness, I need to get a quote in there. You've thought, okay, what is the best fit quotation for the point that I'm trying to make? And the key things to remember here are the writer's intentions are consistently considered why that things are being done. Just keep asking yourself why. Keep mentioning the writer. Um, a concept outlined in the beginning and sustained throughout, and then you come back, you circle back to that in your conclusion and think to the extent that writers achieve their aims. And then, as I said, expertly selected references to the text and context applied to extend thinking. So thinking about the piece of evidence that you've selected, the language that you've analysed, that context should then extend that thinking and really prove to the examiner that you are using context to illustrate your concept and not just because you think, ah, it's 20% of the mark scheme. So I hope that helps this sort of deconstruction of the mark scheme. Do like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you found that useful because I'm going to be putting more information like this out there um, just to support students and just try to deconstruct things and help students with approaching what is actually a very difficult task and just try and make it a little bit less stressful.